All right, this is Destiny. Hello, welcome to our monthly meeting. I just wanted to remind you all uh, the code of conduct for today. Please follow it. Be respectful, be kind to each other. Do you all agree to follow the code of conduct? And everybody's saying yeah. So here's our beautiful group, the WG group, I'm new, the new co-chair, Destiny, hello. And everybody's cheering, thank you. We have finally published our new two resources, best practices for inclusion and welcoming people to conferences. And when you attend conferences to present and you're not provided appropriate accommodations, what do you do as a deaf person? If you need accommodations and the place that you're attending, the conference that you're attending is not providing the appropriate type of accommodation. So those two resources are now published and ready for people to use. We also got a spot on, uh, we got a contribution on the CNCF website. So that's really exciting. And now we have a new S-M-A-S-T, uh, a little animal, armadillo. You still need a name for him. So we're taking any suggestions. Right now we have Deffy, D-E-A-F-Y. And then we have Ally or A-11-Y, which is a play on the word ally. Um, So the 11 is kind of a play on words. When you see the word ally, the two L's are ones instead. And so it's a play on the name. And then A80, that's a play on Kubernetes, I believe. And so we're kind of like figuring out the best way to see A80. That's maybe a name for the armadillo. I think it's really cute. I think it matches our vibe. What do you all think? All right, Rob, you can go ahead and take it away. Out there in Chicago, really exciting. Go ahead. Are you ready, Rob? So, Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry. That's me. Okay. Yeah, take it away. Go ahead. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I was typing in the chat. So um, I was wanting a show of hands about the last meeting, what you thought, etc. So I'd like to have more people vote and um, comment and um, for the next meeting that we have. So um, you can drop it in the chat. And the KubeCon in Chicago. Yes. Okay. So um, we've got a lot of oh, nine people in the working group and, um, we've got four deaf individuals, Destiny, um, Ian Smith, um, Jay and, uh, myself, and we'll all be there. And we have other folks flying in from, um, Europe, Amy June, Aurel Arley, um, and then we have, um, Jay and, um, John here, and then, Star of the show, Catherine. <laughs> Catherine is the star. Yes, thank you. <laughs> is that the sign for star? Yes, T A R, like stars in the sky. Yes, but it, you know, I, she's been so instrumental in this group. So, and getting the networking going and getting things set up. And so, she's definitely the star here. So, she's been tremendously helpful. And so, she's, she's the champion of this whole thing. So, yeah, thank you um star i don't know what the gesture sign is for star um I, oh a lot of things what this, the the gesture for what star I, I don't know what to think about that i don't know but anyway i don't know if there's a gesture sign for star oh star <laughs> like that okay cool different mm -hmm. that's interesting interesting okay so um anyway Moving on down the agenda. Um, so we'll also have uh, available reserved seats 
um, you can get that online. So um, you'll have, you can navigate through the conference and, you know, you can add things online. And so it'll all be online and at the KubeCom. And it's the first time they're providing um, a more international gestural signed approach to interpreting. So um, that will be available there. And so it's very, very professionally done. Um, anytime I've talked with the interpreters um, at that conference, they're very professional and very quick and um, very smooth. And there hasn't been a communication breakdown at all. And, you know, there's been no negotiation on, on what that looks like. So it's going to be on the agenda um, and it's going to be accessible and it's going to be online. So that's going to be really terrific. So um, that's really nice. So anyway, um, so we need interpreters. We've requested them, et cetera. And we had to kind of make our case as to why we did that, why we were requesting interpreters and try to include sign language interpreters um, in the recording. So it could be watched online and it could be seen later as well. And so the interpreters, you know, uh, the interpreters are going to be everywhere, of course, but um, where Destiny, myself, Jay and John will be, um, there will be interpreters where we are. And the keynote speaker, of course, obviously will um, have an interpreter and there will, it will be obviously there. And I don't know about each session, it depends on individual preferences and some will be attending all the sessions, uh, I think. So, I mean, we're not gonna try to interpret all of them. We're just going to follow where the interest is, I think. And um, it, by each deaf person's interest and attendance. So um, AI captioning, um, auto captioning, will be there as well. Um, let's see, and we'll have that ready on site as well. The keynote will be captioned and interpreted. And I don't know about breakouts. Um, there'll be some surprise breakouts, but um, I, I didn't know about that. So anyway, so I guess we'll be seeing the uh, captioning on YouTube later. <laughs> but, um, and they're gonna, recording, they're gonna be recording it and posting it to YouTube so that it can be watched at a later time by someone who couldn't attend and the captions will be there as well. So we'll do some breakouts. Um, and so we haven't really set where the deaf and hard of hearing and interpreter folks are going to meet yet and um, organize themselves. Um, and, oh, so, you know, we'll go and talk about who's going to go where tonight and get the interpreters uh, on board with all that. So we're, we're going to meet in the central area somewhere. We, we will get that organized. And um, okay, so there'll be four speakers um, at KubeCon, four. So that'll be really terrific. And mm -hmm. I guess I should add one more, but it's not official. The next one is not official, but um, there's gonna be some lightning talks. And that's more or less like what Destiny has already been through with, Cube, um, with KubeCon. And so Destiny is gonna kind of run that for for that so that's great and um I'm nervous, I'm nervous. <laughs> yeah are you able to see everything all right have you seen everything Malad said I missed it I was working I wasn't able to see it oh sorry but anyway so they're recording it they recorded it on YouTube Destiny saying and Malad saying so we can watch it later on YouTube yeah we can see it on YouTube yeah so yes the those will be posted on YouTube Destiny says, I'll send it out to you all, but don't send it to your network because we're waiting for KubeCon to be finished and then we'll show it publicly. And um, But I'll share the link with you all to look at it before we do. Awesome. And the keynote, Destiny's on the keynote uh, stage, which will be tremendous. Whew, so that's awesome. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, and Destiny, and again, Destiny, what's new, and Destiny, Ian, and Jay, and um, Catherine will be up on the platform, and um, there'll be a deaf engineer, I think, Midori, was that correct? And then there'll be some- Midori, deaf engineer. Thank you. And then um, a keynote, again, where um, there's going to be a hot discussion on that one. It's gonna be a, a hot dog. <laughs> So um, the tech folks will be on other committees as well. And um, so there, there will be a fifth thing, um, a podcast with um, Red, no, yeah, Red Hat. No, is, is that right? Red Hat. Um, 
there'll be a group there anyway, and it's a podcast, and we're going to be talking about tech and access and all of that stuff. So we're going to be talking about this working group there too, and that'll be on the agenda. Um, and Catherine, um, her company is um, Star, <laughs> the Star Company. Um, and we will um, be getting all that information out to you as well. And um, uh, there's some donations involved in that as well. And so now I'm gonna pass it over to Catherine, our star. <laughs> okay, great. So great. it's a little crazy that we have to be thinking about the next KubeCon before the KubeCon even started, but it's the reality today. So KubeCon Paris is happening in March and uh, we have a few people in Europe, and I'm glad to see uh, two are here on the call. Um, and so, yeah, I think we don't ha have to submit anything right now, right? But like, start thinking about it and 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 have some ideas. Um, so once KubeCon is done, we can get right on it. And I would really kind of encourage everyone to share the abstract with everyone. We want it to be as well positioned as possible. It is a very very competitive uh, conference, 11% uh, acceptance rate only. So it is where people they have submitted their entire life and never gotten a talk, right? So we wanna be sure that they're really strong. Uh, and so I think like if we help each other, it's really good. Um, and so uh, for the people, um, Milan and Anastasia, um, so specifically, so uh, we mentioned that before, but they are like scholarships. Right. And so, um, as we know, Rob and Destiny got them. So the whole trip is paid for, which is great. Um, and so you should definitely apply for that. Um, if that is far out. Right. I don't know exactly when, but we have a little time. But just for you to know. And um, yeah, so you can. Um, uh, submit that. And then for talks, um, I mean, it would be great to do a mix, I think. We should always talk about accessibility because that's important. But I think, or well, one thing that is really important is you're also engineers. So you should not be talking only about accessibility, right? You, you're also accomplished professionals. I and mean, we want to see you talking about technical things as well. That gets a lot more uh, competitive as well because that's where most of the people are submitting talks. But um, so if there is anything, I don't know. Um, yeah, how comfortable you are with the technology or not. Uh, and um, so just something to think about. There are a lot of, um, what's it called? Um, Cloud Native Novice is a track which focuses a lot on introductory um, talks, you know, um, because a lot of, I think like 35% or so of KubeCon attendees are first timers. Um, John, do you know? Do you know the number? It's pretty high. It may be even higher. Um, Milad, yes. So I want to ask you, Catherine. Um, so you're saying that oh, I can't spe spell it. Okay, KubeCon. Um, I know that many are talking about um, Kubernetes different topics like that. To be honest, I'm currently working um, the front end. That's where most mm -hmm. of my experience is. So I don't think that it's a real good match with my skill set to talk about those types of topics. They might not accept my personal skill set as a topic that I submit. So how confident can I submit or how, how can I submit something that's really related to my skills that would be have that would have a competitive edge, excuse me, Twitter. <laughs> Well, I would say probably if if you're if that's not your skill set, what makes most sense is probably just to focus for now at least uh, and more on the accessibility side and the work that this group is doing. Um, and I don't know if you're ever interested in because it is a Kubernetes conference after all, right? So people have to kind of know the technology, and you would be competing with people who are very proficient in that. So, um, so yeah, and I know one of the things is that. There are very few people that we know of that are deaf in, in cloud native. And that's one of the things that we want to change, right? So maybe we just start with 
uh, more accessibility talks. And as we identified people with those skills or as people within this group who started to get to know the CNCF and the ecosystem and start building those skills, we can go to that, right? So, but um, yeah, I mean, some ideas anyways, unless you have like another thing in mind, but I think it's probably rather difficult if you don't have just the skills because Kubernetes is like Kubernetes is at the core of the conference topic, right? So. This is a uh, destiny, just a little tip for you, Malad. So Rob was teaching me and Jay about Kubernetes. And so he taught us and then we took classes as well to just kind of learn a little bit more about it. So if my career were to change in the future and it were to include more of that, that's something that you could look into. Just a tip for you, Milan. And Anastasia is saying also in that area as well, it's not really, I'm not really very much related to that as well, um, to Kubernetes either, but um, I, I am tangentially related to Kubernetes. But um, accessibility issues, um, I think that's really what we've been invited to the stage to talk about more. And um, and it's, it's a lot for me um, in terms of um, submitting topics um, because I haven't really started working. So I'm hoping that I will start working soon, very soon, so that um, I have some, you know, context before the, the conference. But um, and I would like to submit something on my on a talk, but if I don't have anything um, related to that to submit for a talk. Um, possibly there are two other topics that focus on accessibility that um, might be more general and um, more fitting in this regard. And, so, and there's no, I mean, I didn't mean to say like people have, we have to submit something. I was just saying like, we should not only think about this group supporting talks about tech, uh, accessibility. Right, so you should definitely talk about something you feel comfortable with. Uh, we actually, I'm very aware that most of the people here, the engineers here, do not necessarily come from that background, and uh, so it's it's totally fine. But we start with whatever you feel comfortable and passionate about, because that's the only way you are going to be great. Right, if you're doing something out of your comfort zone, you're not. Yeah. And this is Anastasia. I'm sorry, Rob, if you could just. Hold on for one moment. I wanted to just clarify. So Malad and others, myself included, um, we don't really have a lot of experience talking in front of audiences about accessibility issues. So I would love to see how Destiny and Rob will be presenting this particular conference in November, on the 9th to the 16th, I think the interpreter is not sure. Um, then I could kind of have a better idea of what to submit for a talk. Uh, I believe November 26th might be a date that I could have a better idea, but I could help kind of brainstorm with Rob. Yes. And Rob speaking, um, you know, there will be opportunities for Anastasia and Milad to discuss that at another time. And like Destiny, um, her group, it's it's been very similar to her. So um, Catherine, we could use your networking and your expertise in organizing and, you know, breaking through um, and getting a slot in there um, for a panel discussion that they might be able to contribute to as, as, as well as well. And like Amy June and um, Arlie. Um, so it's just an idea for future thoughts. They're just trying to figure out who to talk first. Milad, Anastasia. And Anastasia says, go ahead, Milad. Milad says, yeah, good. An accessibility topic, I feel like is something I might be able to talk about. Now I'm thinking of ideas. Um, I don't know if it's the same all over Europe, but I just wanna say that the experience here is different than America. In the US, 
Everyone is, every, deaf people re are required to use interpreters when they work. That's what accessibility means there. Um, and I don't know, Anastasia, if it's the same for you, but here it's not like a must. And so I'm surprised about the things that I hear in the US. So if I talk about the accessibility things that I experience here, different because here at work, everyone speaks English. And so I don't know if, um, excuse me, interpreter, she's not sure. In we're talking about the UK as well and Hungary. He's in Hungary. <laughs> so, so Malad saying, because of the differences in accessibility and working with interpreters and working with employers and accommodations and how they are different than American accommodations, you know, I don't really understand how to necessarily frame this conversation and if this is a good topic, because maybe I could present about this in Paris, but I'm not quite sure how to frame the content. Maybe Catherine can help me sort of develop that. And then companies around Europe can learn from this and better accommodate the employees that request services. And Anastasia is saying, um, if I could say one more thing. So um, Milad was talking about um, what he was saying is right, but because you know, in the UK they sign British Sign Language, which is different than American Sign Language, and you know the audience will be speaking English, um, and then the interpreters will be using ASL, and um, I don't. I don't think all of Europe knows ASL and they kind of use that universal universal gestural language um, to make it more um, universal and international friendly. But I, I, I understand what you're saying about that, Milad. Milad's saying it's a challenge. And, and, and Rob's saying, you see, Catherine, there may be more of a language barrier across countries between deaf folks than people who are hearing and deaf because the hearing folks will be using English as a default language. It'll be really easy to understand each other, just like, you know, Korea, for example, everyone will speak English if there's a conference there. But here we're talking about ASL, BSL, international sign language. And so now we have a mixture of different signed languages. And then you'll notice that people will be using a pigeon of those languages, sort of fusing some of those languages together. It's fun, funny, but interesting to navigate. Yeah. So I'm not sure. Um, I haven't really thought about Paris yet, but I know that that is a thing. Um, <laughs> and one thing that is important to know, so it's like in the US, it's a North American conference. So ASL is definitely the language that should be used, right? English is the international business language. LSA is not. So there is a difference there. So I'm not really sure. And that's something that I wanted to discuss with the group. If it's in Europe, we have to adapt to the European market. We cannot say like, just because the CNCF has a headquarters in the US, we're gonna impose ASL on everyone if ASL is not the international business language for deaf professionals, right? So, so we have to think, I don't wanna get into that discussion yet. So that's like something that we probably should discuss and then come with our recommendation for the CNCF because that's, we're our group is basic, basically the expert <laughs> group that will, um, recommend uh, what to do for the CNCF, but I believe it should be like what is what makes sense for Europe, right? Because it's the European <laughs> conference, just as the North American is a North American one. So they should be different. They're for different, different audiences and the language should reflect that. So whatever that is, I was thinking probably international sign language, but I don't know. So we'll 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 discuss that uh, after KubeCon North America and whatever we all think, what especially you guys who are in Europe you should kind of tell us what is the right language, right? Yes, um, we'll bring that up, um, Milad. Um, it's an hour meeting, so we'll discuss it more at another time. And is, does that work for you? Is that right? Okay. Um, and we 
on the agenda, there'll be an hour presentation. Um, oh, happy, hour. Uh, happy hour. A happy hour, thank you. <laughs> One more thing. Regarding uh, the accessibility topics. So I think like, you don't, when you're thinking about it, you don't really have to start from scratch, right? I think one thing that we have to first educate people in general is like, what does it mean being deaf and tech? What are the challenges? Because like people have no idea. We're really just starting. So I think one panel discussion where we really talk, like where we have deaf attend um, deaf speakers and we just talk about like, these are my experiences. This is the, these are the challenges that I have. This is what it means, to, you know, like just, educating people so it's just talking about your experience that is super important because people have no like no idea most people have never ever talked to that person in their life right so they have no idea what you're dealing with and what what challenges you have what opportunities you bring you know like no idea so I think like that is something that is probably not only one topic that's something that we have to um like repeat over and over again because it's not like it's not like the whole world will watch one talk right so it is really important I think that's the foundation kind of educate people on that so that they understand the community in, in general and then um um and then the other things are like what are the things we've worked on right like we can present now we have recommendations for conferences right we can talk about the resources that have we have created, the conclusions that we have made, why it's important, why other people should know it. So it's not like you have to come, like if you have an idea out of the blue that is not has nothing to do with what our, uh, with our work, but has to do with accessibility, sure. But we should also promote our work and talk about that. So that may, may make it a little easier because we have resources there, right? We have put a lot of work and thought into it. So those are all topics because it all starts with the resource, right? Like we create something, we put some thought into it, everyone chimes in, we're all happy with it. And now we have to let, I call it like evangelize it, right? You have to go and just educate people, make sure that people know about it. And like talks are one tool to do that. So maybe that makes it a little less scary because we have some stuff now and we'll be working on more and we will have more by Paris. Okay. All right. Well, that's all right. And the experience that I've had working thus far might impact the way I tell the story. And it might impact the way that people receive my story. And I can share my struggles, how I've learned to do my job. And that is a resource that we have, right? And so that can help. I think develop the content for that talk and Catherine can help me Rob can help me develop the content too, maybe brainstorm some ideas and um, maybe we can talk a little bit more in depth during happy hour maybe I can practice the topic a little bit you can watch me give me some feedback um, give me some tips and I can edit it and and make it something that is presentable and uh, oops sorry and I would also, Destiny said, I would like to um, add that um, the seven G. Oh, at, uh, Anastasia, sorry. Um, when I meet you in per in person, and um, you know, I'm not very technical yet. You know, I'm not as technical as you. So I have been just, you know, being a deaf face for this and talking a lot about accessibility and issues. And I don't know what your sign for accessibility or accommodations might be. I don't know if you have a specific sign for that. I think we're just using accessibility for that. Like, um, it, I think accessibility is pretty common. That's Rob's not... asking in gesture, how do you sign it in your sign language? And Anastasia, saying... how do you sign that? How do you have the two of you, Anastasia and Milad, how do you sign accessibility? You you use that, and is that in Hungary? You use that um, in BSL. We sign accessibility like like this. So Milad's like this. We sign it like this. So like there's a barrier, and then you find the like a, a breaking through and freedom. Got it. Okay. So um, that topic really is is the thing I'm trying to show for people to see that I am a deaf professional. And we need that accessibility and um, that it's critical and key to being able to do our work 
And if we're going to be professional professionals working in the tech environment, accessibility is key to that. And deaf people are in tech. You know, I am here and um, we are not missing from this conversation. So that is something that has been really important, important for me to emphasize. And even and looking at the lightning talks, you know, I mean, it's uh, people don't know that deaf people are even there and it's going to be new to them to even see deaf faces represented there and watch us signing and and learn about the very basics of deaf people in professional uh, professional spaces and in tech spaces and focusing on educating everyone you know globally you know that the deaf people are here and we have needs of accessibility to make it work um that's our goal right now is just to be present and be deaf faces in the room hey. oops yeah um, real quick, uh, so one thing that is really cool is the fact that there will be interpreters during the keynotes. That's when everyone is going to be there. They're going to be on screen, so it's going to be very clear. No one will not see it. So I think that's really cool because it's like it's a huge stage, it's a huge production. You will see it's really cool, and there they there are suddenly you know. So it's like if you have just like two people walking around among eight thousand people. You know, to deaf people amount um, nine thousand uh, hearing people, you will probably not notice, right? But if you see, like now, where people are going to see the interpreters on stage, it's going to make, yeah, it's going to make a difference because suddenly it was never like that. So I think that's really cool. And the other thing that I wanted to say, like, I mean, we gave the CNCF and the Linux Foundation their recommendations. Is it two or three weeks ago? And they made this possible. So I think this is amazing too. So. I did not expect it to be like to, for them to really kind of put so much effort into it. So I think it's just really amazing. And, and I think I hope that you feel the support from the community because it seems to be really there. So I just I just think it's amazing. It's like really was it three weeks ago from Destiny that we gave it to them? I don't know. Or maybe two. I, I don't know. It, it's cool. It's pretty cool. Anyways. Really is. They're nodding. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like yeah I've enjoyed working oh what did you did you were saying something well I was saying I'm sorry my internet's a little bit glitchy I'm trying to follow with the captions and the signs it's really glitchy I'm sorry hopefully I'm able to continue following sorry Jay or John um did you have anything to add before we move on to the to the last bit, John saying no. I'll I'll just add something quickly, um, just in support of what's been said. So I I spoke for the first time at KubeCon around this time last year, and I'd only been working in the space for about six months, and I felt incredibly out of my depth and underqualified, or not really sure about how things would be received from my perspective down here in New Zealand and talking about um, supporting Māori and Indigenous communities. And it was virtual, so I had no immediate feedback, so I had no idea how it would be received. Um, but as, as has been said already, you don't, you don't, um, it's hard to anticipate how people will receive your perspective. And I think that's something really important for everyone to keep in mind, to never underestimate the power of your perspective. Um, there's a lot of value I can see already this community has to offer. And you also have the support, having the support as a group is really important as well. I'm still the only Māori I know in this space and trying to speak for, for a, on behalf of a community and about why I think our people and Indigenous communities around the world might, you know, might be able to offer some value. Um, I think the way that this group has come together um, and the momentum and just the the support you already are demonstrating for one another is really important to that idea of community as as a whole as well. So um, yeah, any of those sorts of doubts or concerns you might have might be completely valid, uh, valid um, but still definitely you you, you deserve to have a, um, a platform to be able to share what you see and um, yeah, who knows what could happen from there. So um, yeah, I just wanna say, uh, I'm looking forward to connecting with you all further and really looking forward to seeing what you will bring going forward. So thank you. 
Great. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Jay. I think we have uh, Milat signing happy hour next on the agenda. Yeah, Milat. Is that for me? Go ahead. It's your okay. turn. Oh. Wow, that was really fast. It's my turn all of a sudden. Okay. Um, I'm trying to see what I wrote. Hold on one moment. Let me pull up my notes. You can put something in the chat too if you want. No, no I'm ready. Okay. I hope to see people joining this happy hour this month. We're learning lots of different words, lots of different technologies, lots of different ways that people are doing things. And I hope everyone else is learning as well. I wish we had um, opportunities to learn more like this on an ongoing basis. because I wanna keep learning how uh, the different signs for the new technology as they develop so that we can stay up to date with what's going on. I feel like I miss things or I'll learn a sign and then I'll forget it because I don't use it. Um, so if I miss a sign or something, we can talk about it maybe when we're in person or you could let me know later. So I wanted anybody to feel like they could bring a topic up during happy hour to talk on it, whether it's tech or not tech related. Um, maybe it could be 10 to 20 minutes. And then after that presentation, people could give feedback on that particular topic. And then that would improve everyone, everyone's presentation skills. And it gives everyone an opportunity to practice in front of others. So that was my thought. Great. I like that idea, Milan. And like it's a mini conference within a conference. <laughs> I like that mini conference idea, you know, mini conference for the deaf and hard of hearing, having um, like 10 or 20 minutes to get comfortable with having people look at you while you present before you get out into the larger audience. I like that. And you get feedback. And I, I think that's a great idea. Ter terrific. Yeah, me too. <laughs> And just one thing, I, oops, uh, I, yeah, I wasn't sure if Anastasia was going to say something. Um, I think if it is like the recurring one, it would fall the same week as KubeCon is. So just something to keep in mind because Rob Destiny will be there. So if you want to just move it a week. So I, I don't know if it is recurring. I don't know which one, as I have it in my calendar still for the one that I created. So uh, well, at KubeCon, we're already there. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so you know, we, yeah. we could just, you know, do that with the deaf and hard of hearing group and like maybe we can tour the city or do something, you know, do something touristy and fun. No, I mean, like for Milan to kind of maybe switch it a month, a week later. So because people will be at KubeCon and not going to be able to participate in that. So. Oh, um, I think. The intention was that people at KubeCon, um, while we're there, like and virtual participants included, um, we could have some kind of conference within a conference where we could get that kind of feedback. Yeah, like um, where, and we could literally put them on the phone and show them, and you know, like Rob and Jay or whatever could oh, put them okay. on the phone and we could include them that way. I mean, it doesn't matter. It's it's um, whatever. I don't, what do you whatever Milad and uh, Anastasia? What do you think? I'm just it's just an idea. Thumbs up. Anastasia says, I like it. I like that I like idea. It. Uh, you can take it, take you to KubeCon, even like virtually make a tour through the. <laughs> yeah, it'll get people excited, Rob's saying. And Anastasia is saying it also will be accessible to deaf people, not just in the location where KubeCon is, but all over the world. Awesome. Yeah, it's just an idea. I think it's something we could, you know, keep in mind. I like it. I didn't think about it. That's you saying, well, you know, during happy hour, we vlog and we could do that while we're having this event and people could then join the meeting. It's just an hour. Maybe they could just join to watch for 10 minutes if they don't have an hour and learn a little bit, but be inspired. 
Melanthus. I have another idea about uh, the Chicago conference. Maybe at one point you could do like a live cast of what's happening at the conference so that people that aren't, aren't able to go can have a sense of the space. I don't know if you feel comfortable doing that. Is that something you could do? Maybe with Facebook? I'm not quite sure if that's allowed or not. Yeah, Catherine, do we have, um, like, John and Catherine, do we have um, where we could go live or something like that? During the keynote? Oh, thanks. Well, all the talks are live streamed and are available for virtual attendees. Um, so that is available, but oh. it's not something that is public. Yeah. Oh. But okay. you can certainly oh, okay. walk around with your phone and FaceTime people. That is completely, you <laughs> know, that is, yeah. Okay. Malat says, well, yeah, you could rob just calling up all your friends saying, hey, look at what's happening. Get people yeah, inside. That's so funny. <sighs> I could also ask if there is any chance that people in our group can get um, virtual tickets. I don't know if they're. Normally you have to pay for them. They're not super expensive, but it's, I don't know how they, but because then you could watch. Destiny's thing, I think it's 75 American dollar um, ticket for the virtual event. My friend purchased it for the virtual event because she wanted to just watch it live because she can't attend in person. So it's $75 for that ticket. 75? $75 a ticket? 75 USD. Not the virtual oh virtual if you want to come to america and attend in person i mean Much well, more. yeah you could pay the 75 dollars and watch it virtually to see the keynote present presentations and see us live if you want to watch us it's not public but you can pay to access it i'll send you the link it's kubecon 2023 and Anastasia is saying, do they record just one room or all of the oh, different? Yeah, you have to pay um, American dollars, seventy-five dollars. I don't know what it would be in in your in your um, currency. Yeah, everything will be on YouTube the following week, though. Free. So it's just if you want to watch live. Um, okay. I believe you can also ask. Uh, questions like they take questions from the, the in-person audience but also virtual audience uh, so that's kind of like the difference that you're there live and but everything will be available um, after the fact okay and then someone had like uh, oh Rob you had some crash course stuff crash course on kubernetes oh, oh yeah. yeah so i teach the kubernetes here in um at my company salam salalam um just showing the sign name so i teach kubernetes here and it's about a three hour maybe four hour session and I can teach anyone who's interested in Kubernetes, who wants to learn about it. We can I'll teach what it does, how you can stand up a cluster, um, how to do a Docker. Oh, right, you got to add a Docker too. That means that probably be a five to six hour class, which I then think you might want to split up into pieces because that's quite long. And then I can teach any deaf or hard of hearing person that's interested in watching. So just a heads up, this is something I do online. Um, I can do it at KubeCon at the same time or at a separate time, either way. Where, where do you teach it online? Online. And is it your company, is it virtual? Yeah, it's virtual because you're in Europe. You can just join online through Zoom. And I, I can join that? Yep. It's up oh, to this. I'd be very interested in joining that. Yes, thank you. Well, that's cool. 
And Ram says, yeah. So I also have other deaf folks here in Seattle who know a lot about Kubernetes that are experts. So awesome. yeah, fill in the class. Um, I have the curriculum in my head, it's all up here. So I just kind of go with it and teach, teach as I go. I teach, I've taught it, I think four times here at the company, if you can imagine. Wow, we should have um, all the deaf community that wants to be able to come to that uh, because it'd be so great to learn and, and spend time with each other. And that's really a needed course. Yeah, and so hey, I Rob. actually, I I had that idea, like, a, I don't know, at some point, but I kind of, it got lost because we had so many other things to do. But there are like, the there is a place uh, online, like the CNCF has this web page that is called, um, like, like cloud native communities and these are like uh, like meetups you know so people create meetups mostly local it could be virtual too so we could create a deaf and hard of hearing thanks john um meetup group virtual meetup group um just put it out there so people actually can see it it will probably start with only people in this uh group uh but of course you could also post it on the uh deaf professionals slack channel because there are probably people who are not interested in advocacy but might be interested in that um so i think that would be really cool not not to do it like in a close thing like probably at the beginning it would be just people that you know wrong, right but at some people uh some way some some people might just discover it right and then uh more and more uh, people may uh, join that would be a different way of growing uh, the deaf community and cloud native, because again, not everyone will feel that excited about the advocacy part, right? But they may be more uh, excited about the um, learning about cloud native. So we should definitely do that. This is Anastasia. I like that. As I feel like technology people like to interact with other people with the similar interests because they share ideas and grow. So I'm just going to request a love this tomorrow okay. night, you know, here in Hungary. Um, there's a meeting. Um, I, I guess we've already discussed it, I think. Um, but there's a guy here that um, is going to discuss how interpreting and captioning and all of that works and what the process looks like. And so tomorrow I will go, it's it's near my office. It's not far at all. And um, so um, I will attend that and um, I'm really interested to see what they have to say. But unfortunately um, there's not an interpreter provided for the full meeting. So, um, you know, there won't be interpreters there. Um, hopefully they'll have captioning or some sort of accessibility for that, um, but you know, I'm happy to go either way, just to see what I can see in terms of, um, yeah, it'll be my first time here in, in Hungary seeing that. So it, that's really cool it, for cloud native stuff. And this is Rob, you could use your iPhone and have maybe. the uh, auto captions, auto transcribe work, maybe something like that. I don't know. Yeah, it's not, you know, it's not all that great, but like I could do that, you know, I mean, look up and down between my phone and the presentation, I can make it work. That's hard though. Sometimes if you um, join through a Zoom meeting, like if there's a presenter that uses a computer and they join Zoom. I don't know. I've we've struggled with that and I've asked them to do that repeatedly and how to turn on um, the Zoom and the captioning and all of that, but uh, it has not been successful to this point, but it's still a struggle. But Plus today, um, there's another event and I think it's, let's see, reactive. Um, it's more front end programming type stuff. Um, but today they're doing that tonight and I'm really excited about that because um, I mean, no captioning or anything again there and I'll have to maybe record it in Zoom, because I, I still don't know about the captioning part of that. But, um, you know, we're not like Gr Britain, so we're, you know, they do that. But I don't know, I'm, I'm kind of tr trying to figure it out with Zoom and how to record it there and, you know, like beta or whatever. Um, 
it, it, I'm still working on it and it's okay. I, I mean, I, I'm, but I'm not really sure how to put it together to make it work. So um, maybe I'll do it with my phone, like you suggested. Um, that's not the most satisfactory option. You know, you know, maybe I'll just stay 30 minutes and leave too. So this is Rob. So, okay. If you think about Zoom, you could use the web-based client. Use Chrome and there's a closed caption feature there. Oh, I don't know if the, I don't know if it'll work or not. I don't know. Ukraine or Hungary is catching up. I see. Okay, so we'll have to wait for the technology to catch up. All right. Well, sorry to interrupt. Um, next action item on the agenda is what? Destiny. I think we're through. Voting. Yeah, we're, we're done. done. We're done with the agenda. Voting. Yeah. Voting. Oh yeah, we have to vote on a name. John saying. And, and Rob saying, I wish there was more people here to vote. There's just the four of us. Maybe in Slack, Anastasia saying we could vote in Slack. This is the sign for Slack here in ASL. So we could put our vote on Slack. I guess that's true, Destiny's saying. Uh, Catherine, can we, Rob's asking, and when do you need to know an answer by? We don't really need an <laughs> answer. Uh, but it would be cool to uh, get a name. Um, I think Milan knew how to make Slack polls. I haven't really done that, but he did like some tests. So it's basically just putting the names. Oh, that's all you need to do, John. <laughs> yeah. Um, what's the What's the topic? I'm sorry, what post? Milan. For the um, name, voting on the name. Do a poll. Yeah, we we can just create that. We just oh. put, yeah. See, um, we could. Or we're not going to vote now, or we're going to vote later. Is that what we're saying? Destiny's saying so. You make a post on Slack, Malad, so that everyone can vote. Oh, oh, okay, and okay. So the topic is the animals. The name. Yeah. The animals. Okay. Um. I so I can do I, it. I can do it. Or oh, I oh. Okay. <laughs> really? I did. I'm just, I've been so busy. I, I didn't, I didn't catch that. So, okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm happy to do that. I can, I volunteer. I can do that. <laughs> okay. Sorry. I didn't want to put that on you. It's just, but John's John just shared how to do that. So if you want to, I can do that too, but happy if you do that too as well. So if you're too overwhelmed with work, whatever you want. Okay. Okay. And the names are in the agenda, right? Great. Yes, they're in the agenda. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's all we had, right? Any? So I have a few um, questions if we if we have time. Um, just some like signs that I saw today that I that I don't know. Um, one of them was I think it was like this. I think uh, you said it. It was like this. Yeah. What was that? Time, time, okay. So time, same. Okay. Um, the other one was, it was a lot of this or this. I wasn't sure. Oh, that's the name sign for Milad. That's his name sign. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. I, was like, I thought like four times. I'm like, what is this? Okay. Um, I think that was all of the ones. And destinies. Um. I, have I been signing it wrong? Your name's Destiny, like a D, uh, like Milad and Rob, and then I'm uh, Catherine now as a star. And um, do you have a name sign? Me? Do you have a name sign? Jonathan. Jay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Jay. Okay. My uh, brother is deaf and he's older than me. And so I was really young when I was given my signs. So I was like, Jay, it's fine. <laughs> awesome. Um, Another one was, is, what is, is that G? Is it the same? Oh, 7G is my name sign, Anastasia saying. Um, 
because my full name is so many letters um that my it's my it's like my home sign so it's it, there's seven letters if you take out some of the other letters and and use my um my nickname at home but so 7g is just like the abbreviation for yeah. my name so that's where the Kubernetes folks got it from from her yeah. is it the same yeah, it's like the letter G. It's just easier to see. Is that why? On this that we're doing this, it's or is just, it a different? Time? It's just um, the abbreviation for my name. Um, in Hungarian sign, they 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 used it, and in America, they in ASL they use G. And um, anyway, so you can sign it if you want seven G or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's hard but my name is just hard so we just abbreviate it yeah, yeah. You're fine. all right the smg is fine so yeah and it's it's kind of g but not actually an aslg but it's the closest we can come up to milan Rob, last time um, we were talking about um, cl a clarification issue, um, breakout, doing breakouts. And um, what does that even mean? Well, breakout is like um, when, when, if you have a big, large group, and then within that group, you break into smaller groups to discuss certain things. Oh, oh, okay. So um, it's like separate discussions within the larger group. So are they talking about the same issues or are they talking about um, different issues? It could be, it could be the same topic or different topics. They just have a smaller group discussion within the larger group. And, um, oh, I'm clear now. Okay, thank you. Yeah, it's just that, that idea. Okay, thanks. Interpreters need to go. We have a hard stop. Sorry to let y'all know. <laughs> yep. Oh, time went so fast. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.